evening since March 31st, thousands of people at Place de la République in central Paris have been gathering. Now, the nightly protests are over the government's efforts to make the labor market more flexible, but critics say it weakens workers' protection. While well, the protest movement, which is known as Nuit Debout, or Night Rising, is now spread to several other French cities, our Shirley Sitbon reports. They've been coming here every night. Thousands of people from various backgrounds protest and talk about unemployment, the government's labor reform. They can say anything, but for no longer than three minutes. We have to reclaim our vocabulary to reclaim our ideas. Night rising is interesting, but it's an old concept. I believe in rising on mornings. Night rising began with a protest against the government's labor reform. The draft bill's goal is to create jobs, but it loosens workers' rights and makes firing employees easier. Every day new protesters join the demonstration. Many are leftist activists, but not all. I'm a real estate agent. I'm a biological engineer. I've never found a job in my field, so they want me to go and study something else. Protesters criticize the government, which they say is controlled by the richest segments of society. They want to make France more democratic by changing the constitution. Night Rising is a citizen's revolt. Their goal is to retake power from oligarchs, the richest 1% of the population. To do that, they need to change institutions. This means changing the constitution. Night Rising has its own radio and TV. Journalists who wanted to cover the protests decided to join it. Turnout is relatively low, but it's slowly gaining ground. There are copycat Night Risings in cities across France and now also in Brussels. Well, now for more on this, I'm joined in this studio by Jeffrey Players, a uh, sociology professor and specialist in social movements, as well as author of Alter Globalization here uh, that you can see here. This is Becoming Actors in the Global Age. Thank you for joining me here in the studio. Um, I'd like to ask you first, now you've been going to Place de la République here in the center of Paris, and you've been speaking with the protesters. Uh, what's their main message? What are they telling you? Well, basically, it's a movement that says that um, there, are, there are no alternative left in a political arena today in France. Exactly like five years ago, the Inigranos in Spain said that, uh, that there was democracy but no choice because both parties present similar politics. That's really the same situation that is perceived by these actors. They are young people, but also a mix of generation. Many people from different generations, and uh, for some of them, mostly for the young people, but once again not only, it's also a first big political experience. So, so it's really, these were people that were expecting something to happen that they have accumulated outrage and the law, which is our reform on the, on the on labor reform, is maybe just a spark. So that's just, a, just a, of course, an important topic, but not the only one. It's really a way, um, uh, an, a topic on which they started of much broader movements with uh, very strong claims, uh, but also a movement that aims at implementing politics in different way on the square and then after that in the society. I just want to focus a bit then on, on who's taking part uh, in this in these uh, nightly gatherings. And so you mentioned it's many uh, people of different age groups than not necessarily young people or, or just older people. What about the socioeconomic background? Well, over the week, we've seen that at the beginning, there were a group of 15 people who proposed this gathering at a uh, standing night at the Republic. Uh, but over the week, young people took more and more power uh, and, and took it over somehow. And they are now organizing the, the meetings. And there are people really from all ages, from very different so social backgrounds. They also have been very welcoming to migrants. So migrant people have, um, uh, are not only there on the, on the square, but also they are talking in the, in the popular assemblies. And um, they are also, it's a global city. So there are people coming from Spain, that, that some of them had uh, experiences in Ignatius movements, people from Quebec, people from uh, from the UK sometimes too. So really it's a wide, uh, wide range of people, of movements, but not organizations. So the, the trade unions may be there, but are not visible. They are there as individual people. They, uh, they don't want to be, have these big banners of uh, parties, unions, or even civil society organizations. You won't see... A, 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 a ban of attack or anything there. It's just everyone is there as individuals. So what they tell me all the time is that uh, uh, we want to learn from each other, not not as 
a leader, not a civil society leader, much more we want to learn from each other as an individual person that has some experience, that has some outreach, and we want to build the world in a different way together, but from individual to individual people and um, building a new solidarity on this base. Once again, this has only been going on since uh, the end of March, on March 31st. It just started. Now, you've mentioned uh, the Indignado movement uh, quite a bit, then, that, of course, taking place in Spain. There's also uh, the Occupy Wall Street that we saw take place in the United States. How similar, then, are these movements with what we're seeing here? They are really very similar. They are similar in the context, they claim, but also in their practices. Uh, the context was quite similar in Spain. Uh, Unemployment is quite high, not as high in France today, but our reporters show that 23% of young people are living in poverty today in France. So uh, that's quite a lot. And, and not only that, I mean, it's not only about the current situation in Spain, like in, uh, in, uh, for the Occupy movement in, in Wall, uh, Occupy Wall Street in New York City, and for uh, today in Nuit de Boue. Uh, definitely, the, it's not only the current situation that, is at matter, that matters, it's much more the future. They feel deprived of the future. They want to reinvent the future, and they say, we, the only future they, they offer us is a precarious future. It's a difficult future that we won't live as good as our parents, and we don't have a choice. So that's really something that comes very, very strong over there, as it was the case in, uh, in previous movements. In terms of practice, it's also so similar. We really to have these uh, open speeches, people sharing their experience, sharing their hopes, sharing their uh, outrage, too, and, um, and then trying to implement the democracy. Democracy for this generation is not only a claim they address to politicians. Democracy, first of all, uh, personal commitment. It's a practice. So if you want to build a different world, they say it, it do, and they do. You have to start by yourself, by changing the way you consume, changing the way you eat, and also changing the way you connect to each other. And what is so uh, inspiring there is that the way that they connect to each other, the way they talk together, the way they uh, take so, such a long time to listen to each and every one after five, six hours of uh, these general assemblies, uh, it's, it's really a, a movement that is with a very strong, with very strong personal connections. In the case of Indignado, we did see that it fundamentally changed uh, Spain's political landscape. This, with the creation then of the new party, uh, Podemos. Do you think that perhaps this could be the beginning of, of a bit of a, a shakeup then in France's political system? Uh, to shake a bit the political elite hmm. is definitely one of the aim of the movement. Now we shouldn't, we shouldn't limit. In Ignados to Podemos, the political party. This political party is just one of the outcomes uh, of the Ignados movements. This political party is just um, uh, one set of it. There are many other things happening on the local level in Spain, and it's far too early to say that this movement may uh, then um, may become a party. I think it's not only really aim right now, as it was not the aim in 2011. In 2011, all this movement in Wall Street, in Occupy Wall Street, in Spain and everywhere, were just opposed to political party. They wanted to reclaim politics from parties. And that's exactly what's happening today at the Plaza de la Republique. Excellent. All right. Well, Jeffrey Players, we have to leave it there. Thank you for joining me here. Once again, Thank your you. book is Alter Globalization, and you can find it in stores. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.